This week on DTNS, it's Experiment Week. That's because DTNS's staff has taken a little break during the August lull and bringing you experimental versions of shows. Now, you've enjoyed a couple already this week. Today's is a bit of a departure. I am hosting a concept, and think of it as a concept, called News, Sports, and Weather. This is a crazy idea. Uh, It doesn't even really have to do with technology news. What I've done is taken the process that I use for selecting the tech news every day for either Daily Tech Headlines or Daily Tech News Show and applied it to wider sources. So I used Google News, not just Google Tech News, but Google News, the BBC World Service, the Associated Press, and my own news feeds that I've curated to select some of the biggest stories of the day. Now, unlike tech news, I don't bring a lot of experience to this. So the concept is a little different than I'm reporting the news. It's more I'm reading the news with you. So that is the concept behind news, sports, and weather. Enjoy. Welcome to News, Sports, and Weather. I'm Tom Merritt. This is the show where I peruse the news along with yous and see what kinds of things are happening in the world today. Now, I am not setting myself up as the expert on news. Uh, This is like you and I are reading the morning paper together. And so I'm just going to go over what news is out there uh, and talk about my perspective on it, what I'm reading from my sources, uh, and and we can engage in a dialogue uh, in other places maybe uh, about it. The idea, though, is to give you a wider perspective on news than than just the, the cycle of like, we need to grab your attention with something crazy and awful, uh, because I'm using the process that I use for selecting tech news to say, hey, th- these are the things I think are important to understand the world. Uh, top story across multiple sources that I look at are the Ukraine grain ships leaving Odessa. Uh, so if you have been following this story, I've, I've been sort of distantly following it. Russia and Ukraine had an agreement that Russia would not attack its grain ships uh, in order to allow grain to get to the rest of the world from Ukraine. Ukraine supp- supplies a large amount of grain to the world. And that agreement expired and Russia decided not to sign back up for it. Turkey had brokered the first agreement. They're still trying to broker a new agreement. But in the meantime, grain leaving Russia and Odessa is the major port since Crimea is under Russian occupation. Odessa is the major port that Ukraine would export its grain out of. Now, you may wonder, why don't they just send it out overland, right? They could send it out through Poland uh, over train. And they do. You just can't send as much. It's it's like saying, well, why not use dial-up instead of broadband? Uh, you 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 can send a lot more grain through the ports than you can through the trains. Uh, so, a merchant ship, according to the BBC, has left the Ukrainian port of Odessa despite concerns that Russia could target the vehicle or the vessel. It is Hong Kong flagged, so it is not flying a Ukrainian flag or a Russian flag. It has been in the port since February 2022, uh, Kiev announced a humanitarian corridor in the Black Sea after the deal collapsed last month. Uh, So Kiev, uh, basically Ukraine, from what I'm reading here, says uh, we won't (laughs) hinder this route uh, and we expect everyone else to respect it as well, whether there's a deal or not. Russia has not said whether it will respect the corridor. Ship left uh, Kiev, uh, as the ship left as Ukraine said Russian airstrikes had damaged grain storage facilities in a river port uh, about 260 kilometers southwest of Odessa. Um, yeah, ports continuing operations. Russia not, did not comment on the grain silo attack, uh, fired warning shots at a ship traveling towards Ukraine earlier in the week. Hmm. So this is important. Because if I am interpreting this, and this is just my lay person's opinion, what Russia wants to do is put pressure on Ukraine, of course, uh, sell its own grain, because it does also produce grain, not in as large of amounts. Ukraine Ukraine was the breadbasket of the Soviet Union, um, but Russia would like to sell its own grain first, so it would like to create a market with African countries particularly. It's been on a charm offensive with African countries. Uh, And 
So if it can put pressure on Ukraine and get its grain prices up and be seen as the one saying, oh, you can't get grain from the rest of the world, but Russia will help you out. That could win it some allies. This ties in to other stories I've been following. We'll get to a, a related one uh, in a minute here. But multiple African countries have been changing governments to dictatorships that are switching from European and U.S. alignment to Russia adjacent alignment, usually involving the Wagner Group. So Russia really is trying to create a block of African countries that it can market to <clears throat> and be allied with. Um, yeah, so that's that seems to be the top story is that that grain ship. If that if that ship can get out safely, uh, then probably more ships will be able to get out safely and grain supplies will loosen up and that will weaken Russia's ability to use that as a diplomatic offensive. It will also keep food prices down. Uh, in large parts of the world. Uh, we also got this Washington Post story about this. I don't know that it's going to say much different than the BBC. Uh, despite threats by Russia, Alexander Kubrakov said the container ship flying and left the plane. Yeah, this this looks like it's it's pretty much the same story. Now, adjacent to this, I did notice the CNBC story that NATO official admits comments on Ukraine giving up territory to gain membership were a mistake. Uh, and from what I know of this, Ukraine and Russia's possibility for peace uh, hinges on what territory they would be willing to allow to stay in each other's hands. Russia's purported claim seems to be that Crimea for sure uh, and parts of the Donbass, which are the eastern part of Ukraine, uh, are really part of Russia, historically part of Russia. They make all kinds of arguments uh, and they are occupying them. They're also occupying the southern coast around Crimea of Ukraine as well. So Ukraine is saying you have to give everything back, including Crimea. Now, why is Crimea different? Uh, Crimea historically has not really been always part of Ukraine or Russia. It was part of Russia prior to the Soviet Union, if I remember correctly. And then Khrushchev gave Crimea to Ukraine in the 60s transferred it from the Russian Soviet Federated Republic to the Ukrainian Soviet Federated Republic, which really didn't matter because it was all part of the Soviet Union. Um, because Ukraine said, well, historically before, before, like way back, Crimea is part of Ukraine and it is attached to Ukraine, not attached to Russia. Uh, and then in 2014, Russia uh, liberated Crimea is how they put it. They came in and Crimea has a large Russian speaking population, which that gets weird because it's Ukrainians speak a lot of Russian too. Anyway, uh, they they came in and took Crimea and said it's part of Russia again. Uh, so that happened in 2014. The Donbass partially happened in 2014 as well, but that didn't go as well as Crimea, and that was that was still being disputed. Uh, and then uh, and that wasn't Russia invading on the eastern side. That was Russia saying they weren't backing rebels in the eastern side that have seized to create their own. Uh, republic, which since Russia invaded in 2022, Russia now says it's part of Russia. Anyway, that's all a long way of saying Crimea and the Donbass were already disputed before 2022. So there's some diplomatic minds out there that say, well, Russia should definitely give up what it took after 2014 in 2022. Uh, and maybe there's some compromise to be made about the Donbass and the eastern side of the country. But Crimea, I mean, that one's a, a little tougher. And so it sounds like um, a NATO official, Stjan Jensen, uh, had made comments about Ukraine ceding land. Now, I'm trying to look through this story and see what the comments actually were. Um, cause Ukraine has been basically saying, no, we will never give up anything and we won't, uh, we won't like it if anyone else does. Anyway, the whole reason I even noted this is that if someone accidentally says the quiet part out loud, it usually means it's being considered. They just don't want it to be out there in the public. Um, uh, st still, my statement about this was a part of a larger discussion about possible future scenarios. And I should have said it that way. 
I think that a solution could be for Ukraine to give up territory. So he didn't say which parts, um, but that's going to happen. And my, my bet is Crimea would be the easier part for Ukraine to live with, giving up maybe if they were given a port on Crimea uh, or something like that. All right, this one's no fun at all. Um, mobs attacking Christian churches in eastern Pakistan, accusations of desecrating the Quran. Uh, this is a story that I don't feel qualified to comment on. I do not follow this as closely, but it is big news. Uh, and I don't know if it's being reported on the U.S. side as much, but um, people in eastern Pakistan... Uh, alleging a Christian man had desecrated the Quran, demolished the man's house, burnt churches, damaged several homes. Uh, the attacks in the district of Faisalabad in Punjab province. Um, I think, I don't know. I, I don't know what to make of this. It seems to me that it shows that there are tensions, uh, certainly, and I'm more familiar with tensions between the BJP and Muslims in India uh, and other non, uh, non-Buddhist non groups in India. So I, 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 I don't know if this is kind of a similar situation where the government has been fostering this, but or if it's just, you know, I have a general theory that, that people after COVID are real stressed uh, and we're seeing a lot of fault lines that would normally... Uh, not erupt, uh, erupt. AP says Eastern Pakistan, same kind of facts. Government employed additional police form forces and sent the army in to help restore order. That's that's something that wasn't as high up in that Yahoo story. Uh, mob gathered, police intervened, firing into the air, wielding batons. They are launching raids to find the perpetrators. Dozens of rioters arrested. There you go. So, uh, right. Then, of course, uh, the fires, uh, the fire on Maui, well, fires that are continuing on Maui, but uh, that devastated Lahaina. This one particularly um, is, I mean, I've, all I'll say is I've been to Lahaina many times. It's a wonderful place and I am the least affected, uh, of course, but incredibly sad to see just how much devastation, how many things that I, who've only been there a couple times, love that are gone. I, uh, devastation here is incredible. Uh, but they have started releasing names of people killed because it's been difficult to identify uh, victims. So far, 106 people uh, have been identified as dead and two people have been named. Three others were identified, but their names were withheld until families were notified. Uh, so that's kind of the latest in the aftermath of Lahaina. And I know there's a lot of stories about whether people are getting proper recovery efforts and how that's going and doesn't sound like it's going as well as it should go. Um, Jason Momoa, of course, telling people if you're vac if you have a vacation scheduled in Maui, cancel it uh, because as much as you know, they will eventually need your tourist dollars. They don't need your strain on the system right now. Um, yeah, that's just leaves me a little speechless. Nigerians call for mass recruitment of volunteers as the junta faces possible regional invasion. Okay, so remember when I mentioned that uh, Russia and particularly the Wagner Group are teaming up with Ma in Mali, uh, M A L I. Uh, Niger just had a coup, and the rest of Africa that isn't Mali and the other, you know, recently uh, coup or, or dictator oriented uh, countries, a, a lot of ECOWAS, which is Africa's regional bloc, have said, you need to restore the duly elected president, Mohamed Bazoum, uh, or we will come in and restore him. You're, you're not, they're basically drawing a line. They're like, yeah, no, not you, Niger. Uh, and Niger, a, an ally of the US and the French, particularly. So in preparation for a possible invasion by ECOWAS troops, which would probably mostly be Nigerian, from what I, I know, residents in the capital, Nehemiah, are calling for the mass recruitment of volunteers to assist the army uh, in resisting an invasion. 
a lot of people have wondered whether ECOWAS was really going to follow through on this. So Niger calling up volunteers to say you need to protect us against invasion indicates that the the coup leaders uh, do believe that this could happen, or at least they're they're tra- they're, they're taking it seriously enough that they want to dissuade ECOWAS uh, from from happening. Um, yeah. All right, let's get to some lighter stories. Germany's cabinet uh, has approved a plan to liberalize rules on cannabis possession and sale. So this is not legalizing, it doesn't look like, setting the scene for decriminalization. So we're not even close to legalization, but decriminalized possession of limited amounts allow members of a cannabis club to buy the substance for recreational use. Well, that's, that's pretty close to legalization. Um, legislation bill is the first step in a two-part plan still needs approval by parliament so this is the cabinet drawing up the bill it hasn't been passed government's approval is a stride forward for the reform project hopes to get it through parliament and have it take effect at the end of this year legalized possession of up to 25 grams so it would be like straight on legalization i guess for recreational purposes and allow individuals to grow up to three plants on their own uh, German residents who are 18 and older would be allowed to join nonprofit cannabis clubs with a maximum of 500 members each, and the clubs would be allowed to grow cannabis for members' personal consumption. Hmm. All right. So there you go. Coming to Germany. Uh, this is one uh, dear to the DTNS folks' hearts. LK99, the superconducting material, does not appear to be a superconductor. Uh, this is an article in Nature. Uh, this is not... A journal article. Nature has journals that are peer-reviewed. This is a news article at nature.com. Um, but it does seem that uh, the conclusion of multiple researchers is that the LK99 compound is not a room temperature superconductor. Studies show that impurities in the material, in particular copper sulfide, were responsible for the drops in electrical resistivity and partial levitation over a magnet, which looked similar to properties exhibited by superconductors. I think they are pretty decisively settled at this point, says Ina Vishik, a condensed matter experimentalist at the University of California, Davis. So when I said that this reminded me of cold fusion back in the 90s, really, really reminds me of cold fusion back in the 90s, which was, hey, promising demonstration could be real. Let's see if you can reproduce it, replicate it. And then they couldn't. So, yep, does not look like we got ourselves a superconductor. But I would say before you like call the original researchers shysters, this is something that needs to happen in science more often. People not need to not be punished for publishing results and saying, hey, can somebody else replicate this? This is how science should work. Like, I think I found something. Am I missing something? And then other scientists look at it and go, yeah, (laughs) you were missing something. Uh, It's producing some effects, but it's impurities that are doing it. And uh, and it's not a room temperature superconductor. Good try. Go back to the the table. I know it's it's tempting to to look at all of these as as attempts at fraud. But if this was attempt at fraud, it would have never gone through the the scientific process. So it did, and it's not, and that's good. That's fine. This is this is the process working. The problem with scientific publications, from what I can see, is that you have pressure to only produce results that are that are good. You have a pressure to publish. And so nobody ever produces the negative results. Nobody ever produces a result that ends up not being true. And you need those to learn from. So um <laughs> uh, that's a good question, Cliff Singer. Why not just make the whole thing out of the impurities? I imagine that if I read this whole story, I'd be able to answer that. Uh, but you probably, it's probably not a consistent result, uh, and the impurities on their own wouldn't do it, uh, is my guess. But you can go look at this nature.com article um, if you want to have a look at it. But also, I think the other thing is the impurities aren't superconducting. They are producing effects similar to superconducting. So even if you made it out of the whole impurities from the little I've read here, uh, it wouldn't do superconducting the way you want it to. 
This one caught my eye on the Associated Press. Uh, DNA from Etsy the Iceman. Did you all hear about Etsy the Iceman? Uh, a well-preserved body from thousands of years ago in the Italian Alps. Uh, they have been studying it. Uh, looks like Etsy lived more than 5,000 years ago. Was killed by an arrow to the knee. No, no. An arrow to the back. Uh, preserved as a natural mummy when hikers found Etsy in, in 1991. Uh, and... After some DNA research, uh, they determined that Etsy was descended from farmers who live present day in Turkey. His head was balder and skin darker than what was initially thought, according to the study published Wednesday. So there you go. Etsy's people may or may not have been in the Italian Alps back when Etsy was walking through. Who knows? Maybe he was just off on his own. Um, but but the people most closely related to him today all live all live in Turkey. That's interesting. Look at Etsy. All right. I I called it news, sports, and weather, so we got to have some sports. Uh, England reached the Women's World Cup final for the first time. We're going to have a new Women's World Cup soccer champion. Uh, It's going to be England versus Spain. Uh, And apologies, Australians, if this is a painful story. I understand. Uh, But England defeated Australia 3-1. Ella Toon gave England the lead in the first half with a superb first-time strike. And uh, they never looked back. So uh, look at you, England. World Cup final for the women. Well done. And that's a look at sports. Uh, And then weather. uh, I don't know if we'd always have weather if I turned this into a regular show, but uh, Typhoon Lan hitting Western Japan. Uh, So it's it's typhoon season. And typhoons are no joke. 237,000 people evacuated. Um, 11 prefectures. Typhoon made landfall near Shiono Misaki in Japan's Wakayama Prefecture around 5 a.m. Tuesday. Category 2 hurricane. 26 people injured on that. Well, there you go, folks. That's a look at news, sports, and weather with me. I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I imagine this concept would need some refining. Uh, It is fun for me to be able to say, well, I do know this and that from what I've been following, but not feel like I have to have an answer for everything. When I do tech news, I feel like the expectation is like, hey, I'm coming to you for the tech news, for understanding. So you better know what you're talking about. Uh, This is more, let's all uh, have a look at the news and and share our our perspectives on it, uh, led by me. So, so let me know what you think. Feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com is the place to do that. This is experiment week after all. So this is just me experimenting. And uh, like that uh, room temperature superconductor, the experiments may not always work, but maybe you'll learn something in a concept that doesn't work. So let me know what you think. Uh, that's a look at new sports and weather. Thanks everybody for hanging out with me and I will talk to you soon. <laughs>